hello friends and welcome to my channel go digits today in this video we will learn about automated test driven development approach okay so uh, guys we all know that in the business central uh, the developer can not only develop the application but write the test cases also to test their application right so uh, from now onwards i will be making a few series of videos on this topic only so that we can understand the concept of uh, testing understand the concept of unit testing in the business central from the developers perspective okay so uh, obviously to write uh, the application in the uh, business central we need the vs code so i have already opened up the vs code and uh, this is my project called atdd1 okay so here uh, before uh, we try to write the unit test cases for our application uh, it is mandatory that we should include some of the test applications through which we could uh, write some test functions in our code okay so those uh, test libraries or the test applications are microsoft underscore any microsoft underscore library assert microsoft underscore system application test library microsoft underscore test runner microsoft underscore test hyphen test library okay so uh, this you can uh, you can uh, install in your business central version for example i am running the sandbox environment so you can uh, install these one and then uh, you can add them in the dependency section of the app.json and that is how when you download the symbol it will be a part of your project under the ale packages folder okay just one note guys that uh, uh, these test cases you can run only in the sandbox environment so obviously you cannot run uh, uh, you cannot run or you cannot push your test cases in the production environment especially when the business central is on cloud but if you are running the bc on prem then you can uh, run it for the production or for the test it does not matter but however uh, running the test cases on the production environment is not recommended even in the on-prem. Okay, so without wasting our time, uh, let's start writing our first test case or through which we could understand the basic concept of this ATDD functionality. Okay, so uh, to write the test cases, we have one object called the code unit through which we can uh, write all our test functions. So for this let me create one code unit and name it as ATDD testing okay I don't need this on run so I can delete the same now just to make your code unit a test code unit we have to add one subtype and mention the value here as test so which denotes that my code unit whatever code I will write here it will be treated as a test one and all the processes which run uh, inside this code unit will be temporary only and will not make any impact uh, in your database okay so that's why I defined the subtype as test now let's uh, the very first thing is that uh, obviously in code unit we write the functions so functions in our case because this is a test code unit will be the test function so let me use one snippet called t test case worldo okay and as soon as i press this this is the basic snippet uh, or this is a basic uh, structure of your test function where uh, before your function name uh, you should define this tag called test so this test the compiler that the procedure and the statement written inside that procedure will be the uh, only used for the testing purpose okay so this tag is very important which you must have to add for all your procedures which you want to make uh, uh, which you want to be a which you want to make a part of your test code unit okay so apart from that uh, there are certain tags which we have to add in our test code unit so it's like given when then and this procedure name is your scenario so what is your scenario uh, 
you define here so for example uh, what I define here is that I want to verify my sales order okay so uh, we will learn about that what I want to make in this procedure so that uh, we could understand uh, uh, in a more uh, depth manner that how uh, we write the code in the test code rule so uh, let's say uh, we have this uh, function called verify sales order and now we have these three tags available called given when and then but uh, let me add in case you want to add multiple scenarios of your in your test code unit so it's better that you add one more tag with the name called scenario and let's say add it one number here like hash 0001 uh, and name it as that verification of sales order although if you don't write these tags uh, it will not impact your functionality but it helps the developers it helps uh, uh, the other developers to read out or to understand what your function does okay so now given means that what exactly you want to give you want to pass so that uh, your test function actually starts working on it okay so verify sales order uh, with this function what i want is that i want to create a sales order i want to post a sales order and then i want to verify my posted sales order in the uh, with respect to the sales invoice header table so for all this i have to uh, provide some given conditions so we all know that to create a sales order I need certain things like I need create I need a customer right so let's add let's create one customer okay then uh, for a sales order we need an item as well so what I can do is let's create an item okay then apart from this customer and item i need a location as well so let's add one location okay right now let's go ahead with this only that uh, we need these three uh, basic entities so that we can uh, create our sales order and post our sales order so uh, given is uh, let's create sales order as well okay so these are my given states that, that I give this condi I give these functionalities, I give these entities to my sales order. And then when uh, means that what exactly you want to do with these. So yes, I want to post my sales order. Okay, so when I post my sales order, then I want to match sales order with posted record okay so now you i hope you understand the uh, concept of these tags that uh, what i need to define in which tag okay so i give this and then when i post the sales order then i want to match my sales order okay so because these are the function in itself so let's create the function destination as well uh, it's not suggesting to me so let's create a local procedure local procedure create customer begin end okay so for this uh, because uh, we have added some applications here so we can make a use of those so let me add one code unit it's called library sales okay so this is the test library and specifically for the sales library and it has all the functionalities which are uh, in use with the with the sales order or with the with the sales process in the business end okay so with this uh, it has certain functionality so let's see whether i could 
create a customer based on this functionality or based on this coordinate or not so i will write down library says dot and it has one function called create custom okay so now let's see what it takes it takes one parameter of record customer so let me create one customer record of customer okay so if i pass this and just uh, guys please understand that this is a uh, it's a var parameter okay so it's a var parameter so whatever changes this function will does it will hold it will make the changes in this variable and that's why i make this a global variable so that it the values inside this variable will be available in my call function okay so let's say if i go inside of this destination you will see that uh, all the functionalities required to create a customer are available in this function for example payment methods general posting type vat business posting setup vat posting setup sales and receivable setup and then it is updating everything so it has all the things which requires to create a customer like how we create a customer manually in the system the same function will does for you uh, in the test module so that's why it is so easy to create a customer right now my create customer definition is done let's uh, go ahead and create uh, de the definition of uh, another function called create item okay so since it is item related so just like we have sales we have one more code unit called library inventory okay so now if i use this and create item and now you see i have to pass one parameter of item so let me create the same item record item and i just pass this here okay so it will create a new item for me but because i'm i'm creating a test code unit so everything will be done on a temporary basis so it will not make any impact in your database uh, in your database okay so you can uh, write the code or you can create multiple customers multiple items without any worry okay fine so my customer and item is done so let's create another one called uh, create location so let me write the same local procedure create location okay and now because this is a location so we have another code unit called lib warehouse so let me add the same lib warehouse okay so this code unit has all the functionalities of the warehouse process so this is how you can use this uh, these code units to write the different uh, scenarios of your testing okay so let me now write one line of code only which is obviously i need location variable as well so let me, let me create now one more variable of location so let's write down library warehouse dot create location and pass the parameter as location so it will create a new location for you all right now uh, we have another function called create sales order so let's create that function as well local procedure create sales order begin end 
and now because sales order is a part of sales process so we have already created a variable of library sales so we will make a use of that one only library sales dot create sales document with item okay so here it is create sales document with item so it will create a sales order for you a sales document for you which have the item defined in the sales method so let's see how many uh, parameter it takes so it takes sales header sales line a document type of which type of document you want to create in the sales order then the customer number then the item number then the quantity location code and the shipment date so it takes so many parameters uh, right now we have all the parameters but uh, we don't have the sales order, the sales order and the sales line so let's create the same sales header record sales header then sales line record sales line here it is okay so now just press control shift space and start typing your parameter so that you know what parameter uh, comes at which place so after the two parameters the third one is the document type so we know the document type is a field in the sales header so i will define like this the sales header dot document type and i want to create an order so let me create an order first okay now after the third parameter it takes the customer number it does not take the customer variable record variable it takes a customer uh, number only so i have the global variable called customer and it has the custom new customer which have we have created via create customer function so i can define like this the customer dot number same with item dot number then the quantity let's say the quantity is five then the location code so we have the location variable so location code and then the shipment date so for the shipment date let me define it as a work date okay so that is how uh, now we have successfully created our sales order via just one line of code that's it now after this function runs my sales order variable and my sales and variable will hold the information of my sales order and it will be of type document order which will have the five columns okay guys so this is how we have completed our given conditions right now let's see when so i have to define the this function as well post sales order so let's define this as well local procedure post sales order begin end and since we know it's a part of the library sales so i will write this only post sales document fine what parameter it takes it takes sales header so we have the sales header with us then it takes two boolean new ship receive new invoice so which means that like when we manually click on the post button it asks us some options like ship invoice and ship and invoice right so for this yes i want shipment and i want an invoice as well so i'll write true true okay although uh, it exits the code it exits the code means that it exit the posted document number for you so if you want to handle the posted document number then you can do so by just uh, uh, like passing one variable of uh, posted document number and it will uh, pass the posted document number for you but if you don't want then it's okay no worry okay so now uh, it will post the sales order for us so this is how uh, we can post our sales order now the final condition called the then condition so let's use this one as well and let me define 
local procedure begin and okay so now because we know that we have already posted the order so we just want to check that whether uh, my posted tables will hold any value or not okay so we know that once we post the sales order it goes to the sales invoice header okay so what i'll do i'll create a variable of sales invoice header okay guys now let's see sales invoice header dot set range so we know that uh, there is one field called external document number okay which is always uh, unique and uh, can easily match like uh, whatever order you post if you if you want to search it uh, like your order in the posted list so you can search it via external document number so that's the same i'm gonna do here with like this one okay there is another way like if you don't want to go ahead with this uh, with this external document number then you have like uh, order number field here okay and you can match it with your sales order number okay so based on it you can use any of the set range line but external document number is always good enough because it is always unique and uh, there is a high probability that it will uh, give you the positive result now uh, i am searching that whatever uh, my order was whether it is available in the sales invoice header or not so i write down find first okay after this uh, there is one more code unit called assert okay sorry let me define it as code unit assert okay so what it does is that it helps to check like whether uh, whatever you want to check whether the values you want to check whether the filters you want to check you want to compare something so it based on that for example i can use this function called r equal so if you see it takes the parameters like expected okay if i press control shift space now you see it takes the parameter expected actual and both are of the variant type and then the message okay so for example i want to see that whether my customer number in the sales order is similar to the customer number which i found via this set range in the sales invoice header or not okay so what i can do is sales invoice header dot sell to customer number with my sales header dot sell to customer number okay and then a message which you want to say that data not matched or matched or something like that that uh, it bases uh, it prints that uh, message for you based on the uh, comparison okay if they are equal or not so this is how uh, this assert code unit works uh, really uh, good enough because it continues it does not stop your execution if in case that some error happens okay so it does not stop the execution the execution will continue even the values match or not match so for example you don't even require this line as well for example you just find first and then you can match with your uh, first uh, sales invoice header so something similar to like that okay so uh, i think uh, that's all with this function so uh, although uh, we are done but if you run this you encounter some error so let's see what the error it will show to us so for example let me build this so the package could not be created compilation ended i am getting some errors so where the error is okay post sales order okay here it is the semicolon is not defined so let's build the project again 
success and let's deploy this project let's deploy this application and let's see how uh, after writing your test functions where you should go to test it to check it and to run it so let me open my sandbox so yeah this is my business central so to run your uh, test cases what you need to do is you need to type here test 2 okay so here it is select this okay let me delete the lines so uh, the test tool page will look like this so first of all you have to click on this button called get test coding okay so you have you, this button as well that uh, all the test code units which are a part of your DB will be listed here in this page if you select this option. But you, if you don't want to work with all your test code units and you want some selected code unit which you, which you have created, so you should select this one and click on OK. And now it will give you all the list of test code units. So these test code units are nothing but uh, all the code units which have uh, a subtype property as test okay so yes this is our code unit so let me select this one and as soon as you click on it it will give you uh, the list of all the test functions inside of your code unit okay so for example in this code unit I have only one test function that so that is why one line okay so I can like expand it or collapse uh, anything based on if you have the multiple test code units okay so I have only this function in my test code unit so I just select that and then I can run the same so I have this button called run selected if you have selected it if you want to let's say if you have hundred of test code units or hundred of functions you want to run all so you just click on the run button so let me click on the run selected and see it gives me this error called the inventory posting setup does not exist Okay, so first it gives me this one, the document type not supported and then it gives me this error that inventory posting group code, uh, inventory posting setup does not exist for this location and for this inventory posting group code called finished, right? So how cool it is, right? Uh, system is telling you what is missing, okay, like which manually you never encounter and uh, after you deploy your application your user will encounter and they will say that you have not built the application in a correct order in a, with the correct uh, functionality in the mind so this is the way or this is a very useful approach if you go with this that system will tell you everything like uh, which is required any setup any posting group which is required to run your process in a full-fledged manner okay so now because it is telling us the test case is failure so we have to make it a success result is failure right now so let's make it a success so we know that it needs inventory posting group as well so let's create one function called create inventory posting setup okay it also comes in under the given condition so let me select this and after customer after item after location let me create one more procedure local procedure create inventory posting setup begin and and you know uh, because this is something related to the inventory so we know that uh, we have uh, we have to use this library called library inventory and now if you type here you will find certain functions like create inventory posting group create inventory posting setup our error is inventory posting setup is not available not inventory posting group so I will write uh, use this one okay and it takes the parameter of inventory posting setup and the location code and the posting group code so okay so what I do here is let me create 
available of inventory post setup record inventory posting setup okay so let's go to your function and use your variable inventory posting setup then the second variable is location code so location dot code and the third one is the posting group code so which is in our case item dot inventory posting group okay so we have done this but uh, the error will still come but let's see what error will come now control shift p control f5 let me close uh, this instance and uh, let's search it test tool yes I want to run this function so just click on run selected okay okay let me delete the lines again get the test code units select test code units okay now run see the new error is now the inventory account is missing in the inventory posting setup okay so it has created the inventory posting setup but another error is the inventory account is missing right so which is also very essential that we need to provide the inventory account otherwise uh, it will be of no use okay so after creating the inventory posting group let's update this as well so we know that we have to look into this code unit only and let's say type something like this that update and it has the update inventory posting setup function so let's use this and see what it takes it takes only location variable and that is of location variable complete one not a any code but it takes a location record variable okay now uh, because I have seen the definition of it so that's why I can uh, comment this but uh, if you have not seen it then uh, obviously you may think that uh, you have to create the posting setup first then it will update the posting setup right but if you go inside of this definition of this function then you might see that it searches for the inventory posting group then uh, it uses a set range and if it does not find the inventory posting setup then it create the inventory posting setup for you so this function not only update but it also create the inventory posting setup so which means that obviously we don't need this function anymore so if you want to create the inventory posting setup against your any particular location then i suggest you to always use this function okay and one more recommendation is that before using any library function you should check the definition of it and see uh, which one is more beneficial to use okay so here it is that it will create the inventory posting set of thing for me against this location if it is not available then also it will update with all the inventory account and everything okay now let's build the project and let's deploy the project and I hope that this time no error will come so let me close this and uh, let me search again test tool and click on it delete the lines get the test code units again select test code unit this is my one run selected and that's it result is success no error okay so this ensures that the application which you build okay the process which you build runs successfully uh, to the customer when you deploy it without uh, without customer face any sort of at least setup error posting group errors 
right something like this so this is the use of the test code unit which uh, helps a lot to the developers to make their application uh, more error free bug free okay so i suggest you to always uh, like after your application uh, build uh, development is complete then uh, start writing the test code units to at least uh, check uh, what how your application performs in the real scenarios with the real data values okay so uh, this is the part one of this video where we have learned something like how to create the test code unit what are the applications required to start writing your test code units and how uh, we define the certain tags and uh, how we use the certain library code units and what is the use of it okay so this is what we have learned in the part one of this video in the next video we will learn something more about the test code unit related to the handlers okay so till then uh, good luck guys and i want you to start practicing uh, this functionality because this is a very good uh, thing to test your applications on your own okay and if you like this video i request you to please hit the like button and please subscribe to my youtube channel thank you so much for watching this video